All right, brothers and sisters, we're going to continue Shalom Rastafari again and get right into this. This is on, um, what does it mean, Amos 9 and 7? Amos 9, what is it really referring to? Some of our um, Hebrew Israelite brothers think that this verse only is referring to the racial identity, that, that the Israelites are black. And we're saying, no, it's referring to much more than just their racial identity. All right, because we look at the racial identity of the other peoples mentioned here in the historical context, they were also what we would call today at least black people, though they did not refer to themselves by that sort of uh, qualification. They referred to themselves by their um, by their nationality. All right, you see, we're in this. Um, um, Gentile, the dominion of, of the Gentiles, the times of the Gentiles. This is what we're living in, the times of so-called white supremacy. So a lot of things have gotten taken out of their proper context. And anyone who has studied this issue or the, the basic issues about world civilization, ancient history, so forth, and so on, from an honest and a truth-seeking perspective, will recognize that for themselves. And once again, we want to point out this particular page right here, Israelite heritage, restoring the forgotten heritage to the forgotten people. So in speaking of our divine heritage, this is very, very important for us to grasp. This is very foundational, the proper hermeneutics of this particular verse. Because some say that is, this verse here in Amos 9 and 7 is only referring to the racial or the physical appearance of ancient Israel. We say that it's much more that's being referred to in this particular verse if we would do the proper and accurate hermeneutics on it. In other words, if we would interpret it correctly, according to its context, according to the context of that scripture, and not allow boisterous white supremacy and the so-called hate that hate produced, you understand, to confuse us about the real, to divide and conquer us. So this is what many of us see. Many of us see that we have the Ethiopian Hebrews, we have um, the Beta Israel, we have ourselves over here in the Americas and the Caribbean, the once lost but now found Beta Israel in many different camps, all right, in our own so-called um, denominations and, and, and different groupings, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when we are divided over this, our divine heritage and the proper hermeneutics, this affects our present reality, but moreover, it jeopardizes our future. This is why we're spending this amount of time on this one particular verse. Because we've been hearing a lot and reading different things. Some say, oh, it's only saying they look like, they look like. And we had a, um, we had a, uh, a, a quote from over here, but this page is not coming in. And that was the part two of the, um, what you call it, um, the Helen Thomas video. It was a Helen Thomas video. Every time we go there, that happens. So let's try to keep this right here moving. Okay, so we were saying that this particular verse, it asks a question. First of all, it is speaking to the children of Israel, right? The, the Bani Yisrael. And it's comparing them to the Bani Kushim. The Bani Kushim. All right? Now, that's, this is very interesting. Why? Well, modern day um, black Hebrew Israelites, some of them, right? They maintain this is only because of the fact that the Ethiopians are black. So it's only saying that they are black people. So this proves that we are as black people are Israelites because this verse, they say, says that the Ethiopians are black. But then if you really know your history, you recognize that the Egyptians were black too, that the Philistines were black as well, and the ancient Syrians were black people too. So that's a faulty hermeneutic. That's a logical fallacy. And we need to get beyond that. Yes, it does encompass the racial identity, but there's much more to the verse that we are missing. We're missing the real spiritual import of this verse. You know what I'm saying? This is the key to our overcoming these 58 plus curses. You know what I'm saying? Receiving the word. 
You know what I'm saying? Receiving the word, not according to the way I want to look at it. I'm, I'm not interpreting this the way I want to look at it. I'm really scrutinizing this verse. And not just in the English right here, because many are limited to this English. Let's go to the Hebrew for a moment, right? Right? The, the lexicon, the concordance for Amos 9 and 7. What it says right here? It says, ha loa. And I'm going to read it a little bit with these um, um, nukat, uh, the nukat, right, of the voweling here and make um, augmentation where we know it's necessary because we've looked at the primary and been studying the Ethiopic evidence. You know, in our good is and, and the royal Amharic evidence. So this, this helps us to um, scrutinize, right, the so-called Masoretic. A lot of folks, a lot of our Hebrews, like folks who reject Ethiopia, they're limited to this. So they're like in a catch-22, right? Because then when one say, well, where did you get this? Well, the Masar, you'll say, well, it's Yahweh, it's Yah, but yet you are relying and deep-ending, you know what I'm saying, on the so-called Masoretic text, which is the Masorah is the same tradition. Remember, the word Masorah means tradition. The Moshiach. What he was um, condemning was the tradition of the first century Jews who were predominantly black people, Ethiopians. We know that from Tacitus, the Roman historian. He basically gives us the evidence of that. And even this, um, uh, the Hebrew heritage, right, this, the Hebrew heritage site, it also affirms that. Let's see if we can bring that back online. We'll, 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 we'll check in on that in a moment and go forward because we have um we have about 10 or so more minutes to get into this right here so we can at least sum this particular point up right here so let's go through the masoretic right haloa right ki bene ki bene right they say ki bene ku shim ku shim ki bene ku shim in other words, uh, this is like saying to say, aren't you, right, aren't you like he, b'nai, aren't you like the children of the kushim, aren't you like the children of the kushim, atem, you all, right, li, li, that means to me, Yahweh is saying to him, Right? And then who is he speaking to? B'nai Yishrael. B'nai Yishrael. B'nai Yishrael. In other words, aren't you like, in other words, he's, he's first of all speaking to the children of Israel, but he's comparing them to the children of the Ethiopian. Now, if we would have good reading comprehension, Right, reading comprehension. I think this is fundamental. Once you know how to read, the next thing you need to really study, practice, and perfect is reading comprehension. He is comparing the Israelites to the Kushites. Now, make a note that in modern parlance or modern language, as we pointed out the, the video about racism in Israel and how the Africans are treated in Israel, there's a video out there. There's a lot of videos, but this one is like a full kind of a documentary, and it kind of probes a little bit deeper into this particular point of the racism to so-called, quote, Africans, generally speaking. Remember, Africa is a whole continent, right? There's many different peoples, right? Some of them are Hebrews. Right? Some of them are what we call Shemites of the name, the Hashem. Some of them are just Kushites. Some of them are Canaanites. Some of them are other kind of ites. All right? So let's not confuse that. But this terminology is used generally in global white supremacy amongst those within the, like the European Jews and even the pale red Arabs as a derisive term, like we say nigger. So the word Kushi is used just like the word nigger. Now, if we go down here for a moment, we say we see kushi, right? You see this right here, kushi. Now, if you watch the documentary that we recommended about racism in Israel and the Africans, uh, the, the treatment of the Africans, the treatment of the Ethiopians, 
So even though the Ethiopians are of one nation, and the other, many other Africans of other nations, they call all black peoples Kushi, and Kushi is the way to say like nigger. It's like saying nigger. Let's understand that. It's not a bad word, but it has been twisted, right? The meaning of this has been twisted. But it's interesting that Kushi still retains the same um, reference point as Ethiopian did years ago in America. If you look in the old uh, Webster's Dictionary, it actually will say under Ethiopian it says Negro. Right? Under Ethiopian, it says Negro. I don't know how many of you have seen that movie by Denzel Washington, Under Siege. Right? And there's a scene in the movie where um, the, the Bruce Willis character, the general character, right, locking down the streets, almost like what we're in right now when we look at the whole political situation. But anyway, he says to Denzel Washington's character, um, like, I'll call you an Ethiopian. Right, and then the Washington's about to walk off. He turns around and he says, and, and you're dumb enough to think that that would be an insult, right? And this is interesting because what then what 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 Bruce Willis' character in Under Siege is saying, he's basically saying this derisive meaning that's used even today in the state of Jezreel or so-called Israel, right, as well as in the Arab, right, the pale red um, Arab world. You know, as a derisive and derogatory term, term and terminology to all black people, but in particular to Ethiopian and to the true Jews or Judahites. So let's understand that. So this word kushi, you need to highlight that. You need to underline that. You need to do a little more research. In other words, kushi equals nigger or negro. Let's understand that. But let's go through this verse. Just one more, one more time. Okay, we, we went through this. This is, this is uh, Heloa or Haloa, Haloa, Ki, Bene, Kushim, Atem, Li, Bene, Yis, 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 uh, Yisrael, right? Yisrael, right? It says, Neum, uh, Neum, they say, Ye, uh, Ye, uh, Yahweh or Yahweh, or really it's Yahweh. We know that because of the primary Ethiopian sources. Now remember, the point of this verse right here, it is like the Israelites are taking a second, the children of the Israelites are being compared to the children of the Ethiopians. It says, though the relationship between the children of the Ethiopians are closer and nearer based on the context of this. You know what I'm saying? It's like if I say to two women, I say to one, well, aren't you to me just like she is? That means she has a closer relationship to me, or she is the qualifier. Yes, Ethiopian is the qualifier. And many of our black Hebrew Israelites better get this point. Right, and not all Ethiopians, right, are Beta Israel. Not all of them are of that um, uh, seed, and not all of them are of that spirituality. Remember, Ethiopia is an empire. In truth, Ethiopia is an empire. There are many nations in the Ethiopian empire, and Ethiopia is still an empire. Don't forget it, just because we're in the interregnum. You know what I'm saying? We're in the interregnum right now. Don't forget that. All right? So the children of the Israelites or of Israel are being compared with the children of the Ethiopians as a qualifier. You know what I'm saying? As a qualifier. So the blackness is very much overt in this verse if we would have good reading comprehension and do proper biblical hermeneutics. And we just pointed that out with the first part of this, you know saying the main part of this, right? The main part of this uh, up, up to the, well, there's no question here, but you can tell by the context of this, Haloa, uh, key, see that point, see, the, see that, that cough there? Key means like. Likened, 
Lichen does not refer just to appearance. Let's understand that. Even in the English, which most are limited to because of linguistic handicaps, you understand, it doesn't even say that right here. It says, are ye not as? See, the word as doesn't just mean how you look. So that's one of the errors that has crept in among many of our uh, Hebrew Israelites, you understand, in the West, the, amongst the Falashas, the Exilists, uh, the remnant of the Beta Israel, the once lost but now found. It, it's just to interpret this in the sense of it is only speaking of, right, a racial characteristic. No, it is speaking of so much more. And here's what's interesting. I would say funny, but it's really not funny. It's a really a very serious point because even with this knowledge of ourselves, we still are being divided, you understand, by miseducation, all right? This is the, 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 the time rate or the day rate now, and we have to get ready for the, for the, for the, for the Shabbat um, very soon, the Senbet. So send bet salam, shabbat shalom to the brothers and sisters. Let's get through this right here. So the physical appearance of the ancient of ancient Israel, the Hebrews and the sons of Ham, right of Ham. Now it goes through a basic uh, um, a basic um, genealogy right here, and um, shows right here Pharaoh. Well. Pharaoh, remember we pointed it out, Pharaoh is not really, Pharaoh is the name of the house, like saying the White House, the Peron, the Peron, right, the Peron. But this is um, um, Mentu Hotep II, right, this is him right here, and his daughter, this is his daughter, Princess um, Oshaad, uh, or Oshaad, right, um, and we can see what their physical appearance is, right, now, Here's this verse right here, right, um, verse uh, 7. Are you not as the children of Ethiopians to me, O children of Israel? Now, uh, the writers here say that in this verse, the Israelites are being called children of the Ethiopians by the Most High, by Yahweh. That is, that is emet, emet, the illnet, illnet. That is true, right?